Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we will be getting dichloromethane, or also known as methylene chloride, or simply DCM, from um, Pain Stripper. So we went to uh, Canadian Tire and bought this Pain Stripper, um, and this is uh, the brand Heirloom Max Heavy Duty Paint Stripper. And if you look on the back, uh, right here it says contains methylene chloride, dichloromethane, methyl alcohol, which is methanol, and toluene. So, we should be able to separate all of these from um, that paint stripper. Now, of course, the toluene um, could be very useful, but because it's the last ingredient, there's probably not very much of it. Um, and then I have lots of methanol already, and you can buy that separately, so I don't really need the methanol. I'm just mainly after the DCM. But I will, of course, collect the other fractions um, and mainly save the toluene. Now, so, I just quickly wrote out the boiling points of various things. Um, dichloromethane from an azeotrope with methanol, which boils at about 40 degrees Celsius, just under 40 degrees Celsius, um, where it's 93% dichloromethane and 7% methanol. Um, then the methanol boils at 64.7 degrees Celsius, and toluene boils at 111. So, there's a fairly good separation between all three different liquids, so we probably should not need to use a fractionating column as shown over here, but I'm going to anyhow. And um, because I do not yet have a proper lab stand, um, which I am getting one in the mail currently, but um, I'm just using this really tall um, flask over there to collect our distillate, um, at least for the first bit, because it supports the whole apparatus fairly well on its own. So, of course, we'll be taking everything outside and the joints have not been greased yet, but um, basically, yeah. So I'll go uh, pour probably like 250 milliliters of this into that uh, round bottom flask over there after taking this outside and we'll start heating things up until we start to notice distillate, uh, di distillate coming over. Um, and also it's nice and cold out so we shouldn't need to put this in an ice bath or anything to keep the uh, dichloromethane from boiling off because it is such a volatile compound. But um, if you were out say in Mexico or something and it's like 25 degrees Celsius out, um, I would, or higher, I would definitely recommend using an ice bath over here in your receiving flask because, or else you're going to start losing good amounts of dichloromethane. So, I'll set this up outside, and remember, if you want, you don't have to use a fractionating column, um, if you don't have one also, but um, it's just going to give us a better separation and everything. Also, you can buy one of these simple distillation apparatuses online for about $30 on eBay or something. So, uh, yeah, definitely something you want to invest for. Um, and that's just what the condenser column looks like up higher. So I'll meet you outside. Okay, so I have our whole apparatus set up, as you can clearly see. And um, the only difference is that at the very top, we just have a funnel instead of a thermometer. This is where I'm going to be adding the um, uh, paint stripper. Now, it is a gel, um, so hopefully that addition does work over there. But um, if not, of course, you can always just take off the ket clamp there and just add it in straight to the round bottom flask, which is what I may have to do. Anyhow, so we'll add that, it's already started to heat up, so um, that the oil's getting warm, and you just monitor your thermometer, and when it hits about 40 degrees Celsius, that means that we're mostly distilling dichloromethane. And then we'll just keep doing that until it rises, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, definitely pour it straight in because that, well it did kind of go through the funnel, I had to use a bigger funnel, and um, it was, and I had to take off the, uh, top the joint of our condenser column there and dump it down. It was a horrible idea, bad idea. Just add it to the floss because now our column's all filled with the ugly gels goop and hopefully that clears up as the temperature rises but then again I'm not totally sure. So I've uh, just put a thermometer in place at the top in place of that and um, I'll set up the condenser, um, the water condenser to start condensing stuff and uh, pretty soon we should start to see bubbles of dichloromethane forming as it starts to boil out because there's such a low boiling point. Um, so meet you back as soon as anything happens like that. Okay, so we have a vigorous amount of boiling here, and we're around 40 degrees Celsius of what we're collecting as our distillate. And we've started collecting a fairly vigorous drip rate, as you can see over there. Now, this is, of course, our dichloromethane, and we're just going to keep distilling this off until our temperature rises, um, and then we'll be di distilling off something else. So at that point, we must change in our uh, receiving flasks. Now, of course, dichloromethane is highly toxic, so you must be very careful when using this and not ingest any, and try to avoid getting it on your skin. Um, anyhow, so basically, we'll just let this distillation continue until the temperature rises, and um, then collect our other fractions over, and then just add more and repeat the step to get rid of all of that um, um, uh, paint stripper there. So we're going to distill all of that and just keep separating. 
So um, I'll meet you back as soon as it's hit the next fraction. Okay, so our dist distillation has now gone above 40 degrees Celsius, so clearly we're starting to distill something else. Now this is most likely methanol, as methanol is the next boiling point, and it's, uh, I believe 65 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of methanol. So I collected everything until the temperature started to rise. We're left with this quite large canning jar of 7% methanol, and the rest is all dichloromethane, hopefully. Um, and I'll show you how to purify that in just a moment. Um, but, so for the next bit, I'm going to collect the fraction of the methanol until it sharply rises to 111 degrees Celsius. As soon as it hits 111 degrees Celsius, I'll swap it out yet again and collect the toluene layer. As toluene boils at 111 degrees Celsius, and the package did say there was uh, toluene in here also. Now, it should be noted that, as you can see right there, um... All of that pol polymerization, or all of the polymer that was holding that together, forming the gel, has um, come out of solution. Well, it, it's it was never in solution, but it's um, come out as this very like thick, viscous stuff, which I really hope I can get out of my round bottom flask. But I really do want to collect everything from that, so um, I am gonna let that totally um, dry out and collect everything. So um. Yeah, the temperature is currently at about 50 degrees Celsius, so as soon as it hits um, uh, 65, I will swap it out for another receiving flask and collect all the methanol layer. So I'll meet you back when all that's been done. Okay, so I actually, um, what we got from before, which should have been the methanol and toluene, really wasn't very much, so I actually just discarded it because um, it wasn't actually a viable amount. We maybe got 2 milliliters of toluene and maybe 30 milliliters of methanol. Really, this th stuff is mostly dichloromethane. Now, of course, dichloromethane does form an uh, azeotrope with methanol. Um, that's 93% dichloromethane to 7% methanol. So, perhaps most of the methanol actually came over with the uh, dichloromethane. In which case, we have a lot more methanol than expected, which just came over here. So, what we can now do is transfer this to a much larger jar. And this actually has a scale on it, so we can measure exactly how much we have because we're going to get rid of all that methanol because we don't want any of that methanol. So, it appears that we have about 800 milliliters. So, I'm going to go measure out um, some distilled water and I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so to that 800 milliliters of um, water there, we're just going to add about, I have 400, or not, say, 800 milliliters of dichloromethane and methanol. We're just going to add about 400 milliliters of distilled water. Now, what this is going to do is methanol is actually going to go into the water layer, and dichloromethane will be methanol-free and is not soluble with um, water or miscible at any um, amount at all. So um, the two layers will separate, and dichloromethane is much heavier, so it will sink to the bottom. Um, so we can take all of this and add it in. So, now we have about 1,200 milliliters of liquid, and they have separated into a layer, as you can see right there. It's very cool. So we're going to lightly shake this around to uh, try to get all of the um, dichloromethane to mix with the water so that any methanol present will go into the water layer. We can then decant this off, um, or not decant this off, but uh, separate out the water layer, repeat the steps a couple of times, and uh, we should be left with some fairly methanol-free dichloromethane, which is the end goal. So um, we'll just shake this around a bit, not too vigorously, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so it's formed what's known as an emulsion, but it is in two separate layers. As you can see, we have our upper water layer and our lower dichloromethane layer, which is just emulsed with the water, which means it's mixed together super well and is very difficult to separate. But this should be easily broken in a moment, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So, what we can now do is simply take the top layer and remove it. So, we'll take off the top, and you can see I just have this uh, turkey baster, which uh, is strictly used for chemistry, and we should be able to suck off the top water layer and put it in a separate jar, and repeat this process. Now, of course, if you have a really large separatory funnel, I would strongly recommend that versus this um, method because it would be much easier to separate the two layers. However, I only have a 125 milliliter separatory funnel and uh, going through 800 milliliters of solution would take forever. So this is just easier for me. That's the only reason I'm doing it. So I'll meet you back as soon as I've removed that top layer. So once most of the upper water layer has been um, removed, we can now add another 400 milliliters of water. 
This is our second washing step, and we'll just help to make sure that all of the methanol goes to the water layer, and you may even want to do a third washing just to make sure. Then finally, we'll be adding some saturated sodium chloride, which is salt solution, because sodium chloride solution is much less dense than water. So it'll make the separation easier, so we should be able to break the emulsion, because the density difference will cause the water to come out of the emulsion down below. That's the whole theory behind it, so hopefully that works. So while you're doing this final washing, uh, go ahead and prepare a 400 milliliter saturated solution of salt, um, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so I have 400 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride, which is just table salt solution right here, and this will now be added to this. And I did check the um, amount of dichloromethane that we now have, and it's down to about 750 milliliters, and we remember we started with 800. And if you divide 750 by 800, you actually get 93.75%, which is right around the um, value that uh, dichloromethane forms an azeotrope with methanol, which likely means that we've actually gotten out almost all of the methanol, which is very, very good. So um, to finally break that emulsion, we'll just add in our saturated sodium chloride solution, and hopefully things should clear up. Um, if not, we are going to be doing another fractional or another uh, distillation anyhow, so that'll be totally fine. So um, I'll mix it around and hopefully this will clear up. So you can now see we actually do have an oscillating line there, uh, right there, and um, this is extremely clear now. You can barely tell that there's two different solutions in there. Uh, but the top one is our water, our salt water, um, and it's absorbed all the rest of the methanol and um, of course broken the emulsion so we now have a nice clear dichloromethane layer below. So we'll once again remove the top um, aqueous layer leaving us behind our dichloromethane layer on the bottom. This time we must take lots of care to remove as much of that top layer as possible uh, because we really don't want any water left in this product. And then we'll do another simple distillation but in a moment. So of course first we'll uh, remove that top layer and I'll meet you back. So as you can see we have a nice water free solution of, or well, pure, nearly pure, uh, dichloromethane. Now, to soak up any residual water that we couldn't get off, and of course any residual um, uh, methanol that didn't actually go into the water layer, we're just going to take some anhydrous calcium chloride here. Now, um, I do plan to make a video on how to uh, quickly make calcium chloride as a drying agent. It's quite simple, you just dissolve a car carbonate source, such as seashells or um, eggshells or something, into some hydrochloric acid. This forms calcium chloride, which can be heated up on a stove top to very high temperatures to be in high, uh, to let off all its water and become the anhydrous form. So we'll simply open up this, and you, as you could hear, a lot of pressure was built up. But um, we'll just take this nice anhydrous calcium chloride and add it in. That sound there is most likely just the um, rea violent exothermic reaction as it absorbs any water. As there was a very f uh, couple little puddles of water on the very surface of dichloromethane. So uh, we'll let this sit in here a moment and shake it around to make sure uh, as much of the water is absorbed as possible. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so you can see that it's um, formed this clumps at the bottom as it absorbed all the water and methanol. And now all we need to do is filter it off. And of course this can be re-dried and reused in the future. Uh, that's the nice thing about drying agents. Typically, they're reusable. Um, and, of course, this is not soluble in dichloromethane, or else it would not be there. Um, so I just have a coffee filter, and we'll quickly filter it off into this other jar before doing another distillation to finally purify everything. Uh, so that we have very, very pure dichloromethane. So, uh... Just start filtering that. And dichloromethane is very low viscosity, so it filters quite quickly. So this is quite useful. So I'll meet you back as soon as I've filtered everything into there. Okay, so in the end, actually, after that final um, distillation, we obtained exactly 600 milliliters of highly pure dichloromethane, which contains almost no methanol, shouldn't contain any methanol, and is water-free. So um, this will be used as a solvent in many various different reactions, um, and it's very, very, very useful. So uh, definitely get yourself some paint thinner um, so that you can get this dichloromethane from it. And um, clearly paint thinner is not a viable source of uh, toluene, although with all that wastewater, um, which we had uh, washed the methanol out of earlier, which is right here, with all of that, if you really wanted, you could do a fractional distillation of it and separate all the methanol out of it and recover the methanol. But I would only expect that you get between 50 and 100 milliliters of methanol from that, which in my opinion is not really worth it. So um, there's much cheaper ways to buy methanol anyhow. 
Anyhow, it is important to store your dichloromethane in a um, jar such as the one shown here, which is wrapped in aluminum foil, because it is sensitive to uh, light, and we do want to protect it. Um, so yeah, I just put it wrapped in some aluminum foil, which protects it, and I label it dichloromethane. Now, because we did this distillation outside, and it's actually uh, probably 4 degrees Celsius outside, um, this is very cold. Uh, this dichloromethane. So it's going to rapidly heat up as because it's now inside where it's about 20 degrees Celsius. So um, over the next night, in the morning, just make sure you open the lid if you do, just so that you don't prevent, um, or so just so that you can prevent huge pressure buildup. Um, because you don't want a glass breaking. Anyhow, so it's basically how to uh, get dichloromethane from paint thinner. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.